You gentlemen have heard of Mr. Beast, correct? He's like a philanthropic YouTuber, isn't he? Yes. Isn't he? I don't one... know how he made his massive fortune that he uses to fund all of the ridiculous things that he does. Uh, I'm aware of him because he's one of the biggest YouTubers, right? But yeah. I don't think I've ever watched a no. single second of his content ever. The only thing... I have watched one or two, and what one. Does he, what does he actually do? Sorry, real quick. What, uh, he tends to do big gimmick vim videos where he'll say like. I've got five people on a desert island and the one to last until the end of this designated amount of time, I'm going to give a Bugatti Veyron to or I'm going to give you 500,000 pounds. If you do this, I'll give you loads of money. If you do that, I'll give you loads of money. Oftentimes, he'll go off and do something that is, as you mentioned, very philanthropic. And overall, he seems to be, he's a bit of a normie. One of the people as part of his production team came out as um. I was going to uh, ask um, if that was, if, if, if one of his producers is a, is a woman now and has always been. Yes, has always been, and in pursuit of that thing that he, uh, she always was, it always was, uh, abandoned the family, uh, of, of course. Right, stunning uh, and brave, yep. Yeah, st stunning and brave. So he's got very he's, normy proclivities. It's fairly inoffensive, right? It's kind yeah, of family, child-friendly stuff, I guess. Very child-friendly. Right? Right. I don't know how he made all of his money, because he's... Uh, about 25 years old and he's got a net worth of somewhere between 100 and 500 million dollars but that's why he's able to fund everything that he does mm. and he's in trouble again because he keeps getting in trouble because he keeps doing nice things like this from a few months ago like almost a year ago at this point where he decided that I'm going to go out and try and cure the blind I'm going to give pay for people's blind people's treatment for some kind of uh, specialist experimental surgery that's going to give them the sight back. And loads of people, lots of commies got angry about it, saying that it was ableist. Yeah. And then I think a week or two after, he came out with a video where he said, I did the same thing for deaf people. I gave them all cochlear implants. And I don't know, I think that also got him labeled as ableist at the same time. Very strange that he's doing very nice things for what people. possible angle is there to criticize that i am a nihilistic worm with no nothing going on in my own life and i have to gin up some kind of meaning in my life somehow and i've taken on other people's misfortune as my own so that have i can some have some of, feeling in my life there must be some reason logical or so, also be, also it's however because flawed there must be some there, argument there is an there's a bit of an insulting aspect of it to communists, which is that this is a philanthropic individual using his own money to do this, whereas they believe that he should give it all to the state so that they can re inefficiently allocate it to various sources that they prefer, where nothing can get done, but they can say, big daddy state is doing this, therefore I'm a good person. That's part of the logic. And don't I say logic. There is no logic okay. to it. These people are spiteful mutants. And Just dirty, pure praxis. Dirty merchants. Uh, all they care about is their ideological commitment to the state and nothing else. They think that the state will do nice things. So when they see an individual do nice things, it, 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 it like fries their brain. They're, they're, it, it short wires wow. them, short circuits them. That's a hard argument to make, isn't it? Someone wants to cure blind people out of the goodness of his heart with his own money. And you make it about capitalism or something. But it's, Hassan actually, will uh, make it. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think, I think they also go, oh, well, he only did it for his YouTube video. Okay. Well, even if he did. So what? Who cares? He did something good. He's making he back. He only the... cured cancer for YouTube. He's <laughs> making back the cost on ad revenue to then go and do it again. Like, yeah, I, I know. It's, it, it's an incredible argument. And uh, before I go into the most recent controversy, uh, the website has lots of excellent videos on it. So here's, this is our, this is your philanthropy to us to support us for all of the good things that we do for you, including making incredibly informative and entertaining videos like this recent contemplations that I was part of with Connor when we had a, a special guest on, Proper Horror Show, talking about the psychology of horror films and particular horror films that we would recommend. While we've got you here, Bo, any horror that you'd like to recommend the audience? Uh, specifically horror films? Yeah, and he, while, while we're on the subject. Oh, God, I don't know. It's not really my favourite thing particularly. Nosferatu. Uh, yeah, <laughs> do a good impression. Um, yeah, actually, you joke. The original Nosferatu yeah. film is actually really, is, is yeah, remaking quite it, scary. They, with, uh, it's Robert um, Eggers is remaking it. Isn't Robert it? Eggers. But, I was not looking forward to the remake until I saw it was Robert Eggers, and now I've got hope for it. But the original has a very creepy atmosphere that yeah, you can't really capture anymore from those early silent films. One thing I will say, though, while we're on the topic of the website and things, just to reiterate what you said right at the top of the show, is that usually Contemplation comes out on Saturday and Epochs is Sunday. This week we're flipping it round. So if you're a massive Epochs fan, and I know as you should be, and I know there's legions of you out there, it will be Saturday this week for a one time only because of 
it's the 11th of the 11th and I've got an Armistice Day thing with Godfrey Blooms. And it's free, so all go and watch it. Oh, and the whole thing's yeah. free this week as well. Yeah. That one's free, but if you'd like to access these kinds of videos, like Josh's Contemplation series, it is premium, so you do have to put it chip in. It's a £5 a month, or we have the single purchase option now where you can buy a single video if you don't feel like subscribing to the website uh, as, a, as a, a full entity. So there you go. But back onto the news. So Mr. Beast did something really nice again. He keeps doing this, uh, where he went to Africa and built 100 wells. Right. Do, do either of you have any concerns with this or anything negative to say about this? No, it's what Akon was doing for ages, and he got loads of praise for it. So I have no I'm, idea who I'm, Akon is. Uh, the singer, the guy that did Lonely, you know, the black dude. <laughs> who did what? <laughs> the, the song Lonely, you know, the auto-tuned one. Lonely, I'm Mr. Lo no? Oh, no, I've not heard Okay, right, the early 2000s singer, anyway. Uh, he went and did, he put up pylons in Africa, and because he was like, oh, okay, well, my ancestors are black, so I may as well go and spend the money that I've earned helping out a country that's left behind. And he got loads of praise for it. So I'm going to assume that because Mr. Beast is white, that might have a little bit to do with right, it. Right, okay. That might have, so to explain... It's a charity called Water Aid, isn't there? I think, then. well, obviously, that's what it says on the tin, but uh, it's difficult to have any sort of moral objection mm -hmm. against it, isn't it, really? But are you but a you'll, mad communist? You'll be, <laughs> you'll be impressed at the strain that some have gone to to try and object to this. So I'll just give a rundown of what he did. So he went across... Kenya, Zimbabwe, otherwise known as properly Rhodesia, um, Uganda, Somalia, and Cameroon. And he didn't just do wells because he had this big machine that he was bringing along with him that drills down. It's a bore, borehole or something machine that goes down into water, uh, water reserves that are deep, deep, deep underground. So it's instantly drinkable water that was available to all of those, these people. It was really efficient. It only took about a minute to be able to drill all the way down to where it was able to uh, get to the water and every single village that he went to. I can even play a little bit. Uh, they were all really chuffed. This is the first Chuffing of a hundred oh, wells just, we're gonna yeah. build. I don't think this John's gonna fit. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> there you go, boom. It's raining! How could white supremacy do this? After the water comes out of the ground, it's fed. Yeah, and they all, they're all they all really thrilled about it. All of the villages that he goes to are really grateful. And he doesn't just do wells. He also uh, adds in new infrastructure. He goes to the schools and gives them shelves, some bookshelves and such. He add, installs modern whiteboards and projectors into them because a lot of them were using chalkboards and getting dust and chalk everywhere. Uh, and basically does really good things for these people that other people weren't. And certainly their own governments weren't doing because as we know, listing the sorts of countries that I did there, the governments in those countries aren't exactly known for being pure-hearted. Well, you know that say. UN that we pay billions towards that ends up subverting us? Oh, yeah. They like to pretend that they're doing this, but instead all the African countries say, no, you're just socially terraforming us, get out of our countries. Mr. Beast is doing that without all the social terraforming. So again, unless you're a mad communist, you can't really object to it. Oh, I get it. So they're going to accuse him of having... Like an acute case of white saviour complex or something. Yeah, yeah. Rudyard is Kipling that, is, is going is? to be inferred in uh, in this. Oh, there was a, just to finish it off. There was also a really good thing that he did to one of the villages who was disconnected by a river from the rest of the municipal services, like the hospitals and such. And they only had a very rickety wooden bridge that got destroyed every time that the river um, flooded the banks, and they had to rebuild it. And a few people had died because they were on the bridge as the river, uh, as a big wave came and swept a load of them off and, and killed them. So he got them to build a stable bridge that was above the level where the water would get hit when it uh, burst its banks, and they were all really grateful. So again, he's not even just doing wells. He was also doing really nice things for the people, the locals in these small villages. But of course, can't do nice things these days without somebody having something to say about it. How dare you go and give these people a better quality of life. How dare you go and humiliate the government of Kenya by making it seem as though they're corrupt and don't do anything to help their people. So uh, th th this, is, this is the thing that got a lot of people talking, which is while American YouTuber Mr. Beast's goal was to provide clean drinking water for 500,000 people, which he did, as far as I can tell, activists say his actions shamed the Kenyan government and helped perpetuate the stereotype that Af Africa is dependent on handouts. Now, well, if, yeah, you should shame the Kenyan government. Yeah. And, uh, What's wrong with that? Yeah, the, the Kenyan government didn't exactly uh, provide that clean drinking water to these places, did it? And also, if it takes 
a random YouTuber, a random YouTube philanthropist to go and have to do this with his own money, then maybe parts of Africa are entirely dependent on handouts. And also, maybe certain areas across the world where you have uh, what could be described as third world populations tend to be dependent on handouts as a rule. Hi folks, we've rolled out a new feature on the website, which is the ability to pay for an individual piece of content. So usually it's £5 a month every month to subscribe to all of the content on the website. But I appreciate there are going to be people who simply don't want to do that. They, they would be interested instead in purchasing a single piece of content for a lower amount and they've got a particular a particular niche that they're interested in watching. And so they don't want every single piece of content, they just want this one thing. So we've introduced this function where you can just sim simply purchase the one thing for £1.89, which I think is about $2.30 at the current exchange rates. Uh, and then that's just yours forever. So there's no sort of commitment there. There's no uh, rolling subscription. It's just that one thing. So that's an option now that's on the website. It's completely live. It's completely available. And uh, please go and enjoy it. And we'll see you all very soon. You tend to you don't find, tend to find many countries in sub-Saharan Africa that aren't massively dependent on international aid. And that international aid may go to good uses if it weren't for how corrupt the governments are in places like Kenya. If the three options are the United Nations, which go and look at my segment on the UN AIDS 21 principles. They've got things like children can consent to sex in there. So if the option is the United Nations, right? The Chinese Belt and Road Program, which buses in Chinese people to work as slave labor and then extracts them out and then gets the entire dictatorial economy hooked on their infrastructure loans to then take over the country. So UN, China, or Mr. Beast, <laughs> think I know which one I'm going to be picking, not just on efficacy grounds, but on moral grounds alone. So I don't care for the whining. Yeah, but let's, let's see what, what's uh, been said in the article itself. So they said some Kenyan activists and journalists said that he spotlighted the failures of the Kenyan government. Good. Um, while Mr. Beast, I, I, ironically, he said that he anticipated as he was releasing the video that he would be cancelled following releasing the video because this keeps happening to him. As we've already covered and as we've already mentioned, it must be a rather strange position to find yourself in that I'm, I'm going off and basically saving children's lives by providing them clean drinking water and people will despise me for this. Well, another bloke cured the blind and provided food and water to people and uh, he was killed for that a couple of thousand years ago. So if it's in the same vein, there's kind of a track record for it. <laughs> Heaven forbid the Kenyan government should suffer any criticism. <laughs> I know. <laughs> they are beyond reproach. They're a leftist are they jumping not? in front of the bullet for the Kenyan government. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. So, yeah, it says the new wells will provide clean drinking water for up to 500,000 people in Cameroon, Kenya, Somalia, Uganda, and Rhodesia, Zimbabwe. Donaldson said that Jim, Jimmy Donaldson's his real name. While an accompanying fundraiser to support local water aid organizations had raised more than three hundred thousand dollars by Monday morning, so it's not that he went and set up these wells and then left it all behind. He has also set up fundraising and give, donated even more money. Great, I like him. So his name's Jimmy. Yeah, I like the cut of Jimmy's jib. Yeah, I, I, you know, <laughs> good, I, good luck to him. Well, I, I, it's, it's obviously a net good, isn't it? Hmm, if you're clearly. reducing human misery. Well, some people don't see it that way. So the CNN reached out to a Kenyan government spokesperson for comment, but didn't get a response. They're like, we're not saying a thing about this. Sabra Kaba Jones, founder of and CEO of Face Africa, an organization working to improve water infrastructure and sanitation in sub-Saharan Africa, told CNN, I've been doing this for 15 years, but we've been struggling to continue the work because of funding, awareness, and advocacy all taking work. Uh, overnight, this person comes along who happens to be a white male figure with a ah. huge platform, and all of a sudden, he gets all of the attention. It's kind of frustrating, but it's also understanding the nature of how the world is. I love how revelatory this is. This is what we were talking about in your first segment, the grievance industrial complex. No NGO actually wants to solve its own problems, because if they do, the gravy train dries up. So what happens here is you're scared that your income, revenue stream, and the all of the social clout you'll get at all of these nice functions when you introduce yourself at a cocktail party saying that I'm building wells in Africa. Oh, isn't that really nice old white lady? You should become friends with me. All of that's going to disappear because a bloke actually does your job for you. 
That's it. But like you don't actually care about Wales in Africa. You care about getting a pat on the back from high society. And yeah, you can argue, well, he got a 10 minute YouTube video out of it. Okay. Uh, and the, all of these kids got clean drinking water out of it. Yeah, so they're not dying. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty fair trade as far as I'm concerned. Uh, aspiring Kenyan politician, I wonder if he's biased in his perception mm. of this. Francis Gatto criticized Donaldson's video saying on X that it perpetuated the stereotype that Africa is dependent on handouts and philanthropic intervention, though Gatto's comments attracted criticism of their own. I mean, once again, a lot of Africa is. But if you are... It, it, it is. If you are an aspiring politician and the current government is very corrupt and you yourself are not corrupt, and I of course wouldn't suggest that this gentleman's corrupt, why wouldn't you ally with Mr. Beast considering... He's doing what people clearly want. Why wouldn't you point and say, "Why isn't our government doing this?" Yeah, why wouldn't you say, "You know what? I'm going to make I'm when I'm when I'm your president or prime minister or whatever is in Kenya, I forget. I'm going to make Mr. Beast our, our national ambassador for global development, and he's going to be building wells everywhere. If you weren't corrupt, and I also, would suggest that might be a good strategy. To, to jump ahead, um, in 2022 alone, in the fiscal year, the United States provided nearly. $324 million in humanitarian assistance to the people of Kenya. That'll be all on gender studies programs. More than likely. So where is this money going to, apart from gender studies programs? It's going into the back pockets of Kenyan politicians. So if it means, if the US is wasting, essentially, this much money, when one guy with a YouTube channel can do more, then once, like Connor said, I know who I'm going to choose over it. But this, this was my absolute favorite one. This was my favorite bit of rage posting about this. This is some guy, Albert Nat Hyde, who managed to attract the best community notes I've ever 1 seen. One million views on this, and almost 5,000 people liked this for some reason. Mr. Beast, 100 Wells, is disrespect to Africans. He described the entire Africa as a village with its people living in huts. No, he didn't. He visited villages which had huts in them. But also, if you're going to depict the African utopia in Black Panther, maybe don't depict it as an entire place with people living in huts. Where you build wood, mud huts into the sides of the glass palace. skyscraper. <laughs> the palace! <laughs> Amazing. He projected that all Africans lack good drinking water. Well, lots of them clearly do. Yeah, if, I mean, not all of them, but a lot of them. Enough that this was a necessary thing to do in the first place. Right. Wells in 2023 is offensive. Why not boreholes or pipe-borne water? What? No, actually, that's a ridiculous statement. Also, um, one, sure, it, 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 it's rudimentary, but two, if they're used to a community-focused way of living, then actually the well creates a sort of social site that integrates into the way that these people expect to live. Well, some of these people that he went and built wells for, they had to take a um, literally a trip down a mountain to get to the most local water source, though it was clean water, and even that clean water was infected with parasites that gave them typhoid every so often. So they had to get up at 4 a.m. in the morning before they went to school. And this was the entire community, including the children, including the parents. And they all had to go and carry, uh, carry up to 40 pounds of water up and down a mountain every single day, twice a day. And so what did he do? He shows up and he gives them a water source that is right there on your doorstep. Yeah, but why aren't you building giant aqueducts? Why aren't you a plumber? That's genuinely his argument. But uh, Africa... Africans do not need water donation. We ain't that poor and thirsty. Once again, enough of you were. Africa is a continent with 54 countries. He must be specific where he went. He was. Yep. He, he said, I went to this country. I went to Kenya, Zimbabwe, Uganda. Okay. This is capitalism. He lo want to low-key use these countries for profit. Okay. I too have sch uh, schizophrenia. And uh, he has set Africans for global ridicule by building wells we never asked him for. And the, the community note. The hilarious. community note is brilliant. Where it's just this is speculation. No, he has not. <laughs> <laughs> no, he has not. E each point absolutely demolished with facts and logic. But, but, sorry, who is this guy? Albert something. Well, I'll who, tell. Who is he? I'll tell you who he is. A resentful moron. I mean, uh, he's more than that because okay. I I don't know how many people did this, but on this particular thread, you can do an amazing thing called scrolling down. <laughs> and if you scroll down, he's got clips. Like, oh, can you believe how awful this is? He's just doing this for attention. Also, by the way, use my code on this, <laughs> use my promo code on this betting website. He is a grifter. He's taking sponsorships on his spike posts. Yes. Oh, piss on off. On his Wakanda post. What a filthy capitalist. Yeah. Mm. Trying yeah. to make money.
That is a good point. We all know that's evil. Yeah. You, you've Attempting got, to not be poor. You've got a good point. So, of course, this led to some memes. <laughs> Funnily dropped by oh, doing, it's account. doing his classics. Oh. Is our basic competence hurting Africa's feelings? Mm-hmm. Apparently. Apparently so. But then I also thought to myself, this whole idea of Africa is completely dependent on handouts and African populations and the African diaspora is completely dependent on handouts, which of course they're not, which is why so many of them come to Western countries specifically for welfare handouts. And I thought, what's a good example? What's a good example of a place that has really terrible living conditions, which is only and entirely the cause of evil Western imperialism and the legacy of slavery? Well, I mean, Haiti. Haiti is a place that that uh, apparently is only destroyed because of evil colonialism and imperialism and, and slavery. And is, such. is that what you're calling the Clinton Foundation now? Uh, maybe. Um, but I decided to point out that, yes, a lot of these populations have to live on handouts because they constantly whine about how we can't do anything, our government's really corrupt because the government is really corrupt, but then they turn around and blame it on Western people. So in, in this, this is an article from NPR, the most trustworthy source, talking about the greatest heist in history, how Haiti was forced to pay reparations for freedom. And I looked into this recently and thought I'd bring it up here because I wanted somewhere to talk about it. It's, it's hilarious. They, talk, they complain about how much of this debt to France was the legacy of what the University of Virginia calls the greatest heist in history, surrounded by French gunboats. This is after the Haitian Revolution. They, they, do you know what they don't do, Bo? Do you know, if you were to talk about the Haitian Revolution, what's something that you would probably mention? Uh, slave revolt? What, what, Napoleon? What, what, was a, what was a big part of the slave revolt? Was it, was it the mass genocide of the white population uh, of Haiti, including yeah. the women and innocent children? Yeah. They, they don't mention that in here, okay. shockingly enough. And they, uh, men, they, but they do bring up the evil French colonialists, otherwise known as white people, surrounded the island with gunboats and forced uh, Haiti to pay reparations to the slaveholders, probably due to all of their family members that they brutally butchered. Didn't we, as well, just pay a shed load of reparations to Kenya for an accused massacre in the 60s when they were still under, under general well, British control? So where well, did all a, that money disappear to? Well, well, that's a question, isn't it? When we're constantly being told that we need to pay reparations, and then you look and see that the US is already paying hundreds of millions of dollars in humanitarian aid, other than pure semantics, what's the difference between the money that would be sent in reparations and the money that is sent in humanitarian aid. Uh, that money's not washed in white guilt. You've got a good point. It doesn't come with an apology note. Yeah. It You're right. It doesn't smell of the tears of That's what it is. Because um, the French economist Thomas Piketty, the most trustworthy economist, of course, resurrected the idea of reparations to Haiti, arguing that France owes Haiti at least $28 billion. But if we were to send that reparations over, what would happen? What's the connection Haiti and just the Af and Africa, just the just the slave trade, just in general? Well, it's the general white guilt that's always thrown at us over these, and the fact that if any white person goes over and does anything, that you're automatically assumed to be some kind of evil colonizer. Right. Okay. And, and so I found it funny that we already give them lots of money and aid, mm. thirteen billion over the course of about ten to thirteen years. They still. And the country still looks like this. Well, it's still one of the epicenters of child trafficking in the world. So yep. I would assume, unfortunately, quite a lot of the money gets funneled into that trade. And also, if France needs to give any money, well, France already gives, let me see here, um, 10 to 15 billion euros in foreign aid a year. A lot of, I imagine, will probably be included in any funds that are going to Haiti. I didn't know we'd be talking about Haiti, but it's an interesting thing, the history of it. It used to be called, what they call it, San Domingo, I think, or something? Yeah, that was the name before uh, the right. revolt. Um, because you've also got the Dominican Republic, right? And it's a bit like North, the North-South Korea thing. Mm. It's like they're right next to each other. They've got very, very similar resources. They're the, sort of the same people. And just one culture, one economy is sort of okay, and the other one's a complete car crash. And uh, I... I it's, it's, it's like North telling, or South it? Korea and the Dominican Republic of Haiti. It's just, it's, it's just so obvious. Yeah. Just don't run your country like this. But uh, this is all... To, and if you do, the results will be disastrous. Yeah. This is all to basically say, um, don't bite the hand that feeds and black grievance never gets anybody anything. Maybe you should, when somebody comes over and does something kind, like build a hundred wells across many countries in Africa, 
maybe some gratitude as the people who were in those villages who actually got the water displayed because they were all very happy to receive it. They were really grateful. Maybe be more like that and don't push your own grievance politics for your own political goals. If you appreciated that episode from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the Lads Hours, this one on male role models. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Twitter at lotuseaters underscore com on Twitter. Thank you and goodbye.